So I think the, the next important point um, to the next presentation, which we did was um, to evaluate the outcomes of individuals who have high risk disease. Now, high risk myeloma is defined in a lot of different ways. You know, one of the ways is they have high risk mutations in their uh, myeloma cells. So that is certainly a very common way of how this is decided. But we also know that the individuals who relapse early within the first year and a half of their of their start of the diagnosis are also high risk individuals. And so what we did is we mined a huge data set, which is uh, from the Cota, Cora data set, which is um, looks at these individuals with myeloma. We had more than 5,000 patients in this large data set, and we identified close to 1,700 patients who were eligible based on these criteria, what we described as functional high risk and cytogenetic high risk. Functional, again, means they are relapsing early and cytogenetic means they have a bad mutation, which is all predefined from previous data sets. Um, so, you know, the reason it was important again is do we need to design, what is an ideal treatment in these patient populations if this happens, like the relapse happens, where should we focus? And then the second part was, where should the future clinical trials be designed for to move the needle forward for our patients with multiple myeloma? So what I, I would say is we found is some very interesting observations. You know, first we found that more African-American individuals had a higher proportion of functional high-risk means relapsing early than the individuals with um, um, that than individuals with cytogenetic high risk, you know. So African-American population and younger age were both linked to early relapse in our data set or where the risk factors for it. Um, the second thing we also noticed that, um, you know, if the patient had received um, stem cell transplant, it was a beneficial thing for them to do in the newly diagnosed setting that it will prevent or delay the relapse for these patients. So that was second part. And then the third important part was that Darzolex or daratumumab, the individuals which received or who received this monoclonal antibody in the second line after they relapsed um, for these high risk population, they also had a better outcome. So I think to us at the end of the day, it really pointed out to some, some key information. You know, the first part was um, there was a significant benefit of um, individuals who received stem cell transplant in the newly diagnosed setting and higher proportion of cytogenetic high risk received it. So that's important. Um, again, what we had seen at ASH that transplant still has a lot of value in multiple myeloma. Secondly, we, re we understood that the patients who got daratumumab as a second line therapy for these early relapses, they also did better. And um, last but not the least, we um, helped understand that what are the, the factors an individual will have in the first line diagnosis at the time of starting treatment, which will predict their likelihood of relapsing early. So I think these three are, are, are really important factors because you could impl implement them in your day-to-day -day clinical practice and bring them to your patients when you see them next is, I, you know, what is the treatment strategy you will apply for your patients and how we will counsel your patients. And obviously for the future research, this is also important because it helps us in the clinical trial field to address how the future studies needs to be done.